لا يزال الخير حيا لا يزال إن في الدنيا سلاما واضلا What the Bible means is the word of God. We have to define these things. Okay, let's define Bible, come on. The beginning of John says, in the beginning was the word. Yeah. The word of God was before everything else. Okay. Okay. So when the Bible talks about the word of God, it speaks about the word of God. It doesn't speak about itself. Okay. So, so that's my answer. Is that your answer? So you misunderstood what the word of God means somehow. I think you misunderstood. Okay. Is the Bible inspired by God? I think let me let me rephrase that. Is the Bible inspired or revealed by God? I, I think the Bible is an accurate account about the Word of God. How do you know that? Because I've read it. Okay, have you read the earliest? Do you have any of the original manuscripts? You don't. Of course not. So, so, so how do you how do you trace how do you trace what's in the Gospels or what's in the Bible back to God? Okay. How do you trace it? I said it's a reliable source of information. No, but how do you know it's reliable? Just because you say it's reliable doesn't mean it's reliable, is it? How do you know it's reliable? If you do not have the original, if you do not have the earliest copies, if you have copies from like three, four centuries. Yeah. Shall we move a move further over? Stay in the shade, go around that side. What's going on? You ganging up on me before you No no no, it's only one and one. No one is ganging up on you. Guys, are we ganging up on him? We are not. He's it's, talking to you. Yeah, it's only one to one. <laughs> Don't worry. No, but I, I over there. like to uh, over there. Yeah, you are uh, there, where? But I like to. I don't like to jump all over the place. No, no, we are talking one topic. Like no, no, one topic. Then it's not one we are talking about so one can, topic. If you talk about this, where are you gonna go? Just there, would do. <laughs> if you talk about a clear topic, you got me right in the sun now. Thanks a lot. <laughs> if we talk about a clear topic, <laughs> then we talk. It is a clear topic. Then, then the, is the yes, but that's, that's a clear look, look. Topic. Your source, look, look. Your source about what you believe in is from the Bible. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Now, because your main source is what you think is actually an accurate account. Yes. This is a claim. Are you able to prove this claim? That it is accurate. The accounts in the Bible are accurate representation of what Jesus said, what the disciples said, what they preached, what the other prophets preached in the previous uh, uh, revelations. Are you able to tell me that this is... Because you see, if you had a first century manuscript, yes, I can say yes, you got something tangible that I can look into or ask experts to look into. But you do not have the first century manuscripts. You do not have the second century manuscripts. You have fragments from the second and third century. It's also very less in terms of what you have from the Bible. Most of it is like from the fourth century onwards. So how can you, with certainty, claim that this is an accurate account? Okay. How? Okay. Now, the Bible is obviously how many books? About 66 or 72. And there's other books that we could actually use that are not even in the Bible. If we talk about the mainly so the New Testament, talk, so it'll be easier. Yes. Yeah, so the New have, Testament is the same, I think, in both Catholics it, and Protestants. It's Protestant. useful to sort of narrow it down okay. a bit. Otherwise, you no have problem. so many different books to talk about. Yeah. Okay? Go on. So we could talk about the New Testament. It's yeah. accurate. Uh, How do you know it's accurate? Of, um, well, one is it's the only account we have of the life of Jesus. No, there are many different manuscripts. But what do you mean only account? Uh, okay. The, the, book, the, the, the four Gospels are the only reliable accounts we have of the... No, but how do you say it's reliable? That's the question. How do you know it's reliable? Okay, but we don't have any other source of information. So, really. so let me get so, this. If I have so, only one source, I should assume that it's reliable. No, you're putting what is that? in my mouth. No, I'm asking, it's a question to you. If, if there is only one source, if, then I should automatically assume that it is reliable. Is that your, okay. is that your understanding of... Don't what be, the Bible is or the Gospels be, are? Don't be silly. Well, that's what the statement you made, isn't it? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that's your statement. Said, if you want to know about the life of Jesus, yeah, the best source of information we have are the four Gospels. Why you say it's the best source? Because that's the only source of information. Okay, so if it is the only there's source, few, means what? No, no. There's a few other references here and there, but they're not enough to put the whole picture together. So if you want to know about the life of Jesus, we need to read the four Gospels in the first place. So Jesus if lived we, for how long? If we want to know the four, if we want to understand the four Gospels, yeah. we need to read the books of the Old Testament, the, in the Hebrew Bible, the prophets, uh, and the history of the Jewish people. 
so we can understand the four gospels better. No, but but you're already claiming, you're you're already assuming that the four gospels are accurate representation of the life of Jesus. When Jesus yeah. lived, according to you, I think he, he lived around 33 years. Yes. Yeah. Of his life, we only have a count of three years. So it's not the life of Jesus. It's a fraction of the life of Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So from the three years, are you telling me that what is mentioned in the Bible is an accurate representation of Jesus's teachings? Yeah. Based on what? Because the, the Bible, the Gospels okay. you have today, they date back to the fourth century, most of them. Well, the first century, yeah. No, you don't have any manuscript from the first century. I don't have that, no. So, how do you say the first if century you, then? If you want to do historical research, you don't. Need, you shouldn't ask me. Because no, no, no. I'm not a historian. No, you don't have to be a historian. You see, but, uh, you have to actually research your religion. Yeah, I that have, I have. the gospels that I have in my possessions, they came from where? I where did they come but it's from? Useful to listen. So, so where did they come from? The gospels that you have today. If you want to judge if something is true. Yeah. yeah. You can say it makes sense. It adds up. No, it doesn't add up. No, not not, to, not according to you. According to no, no, me. not even to the, not according but to the. For example, if I asked you about Jesus's life, for example, if Jesus did something in his childhood, because you don't have much mention in the Bible, then you wouldn't know anything about his childhood, would you? Well, we don't know much about his childhood. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. But it doesn't really matter about his childhood. So what matters is, to me right now is. How can you verify what is written in the Gospels yeah. is actually the teachings of Jesus? How can you verify that? Because those three years that we talked about in the Gospel, yeah. that's the main bit of the Gospel is the three years, that's when he was teaching. No, so no, you, you misunderstood the question. You know teaching, even in the three years, it's enough wait a minute, even in the three years of his yeah. uh, extant history in the Gospels, the question still remains, how do you know what is mentioned in the Gospels? is an accurate representation of the teachings of Jesus. Yeah. How would you know that? Well, that's the only explanation we have of his teaching. I but you didn't so. give an explanation. Huh? You didn't tell me how it is accurate. You just told me that it contains the three years of his so, life okay. or something. That, all, that too, only, after I prompted. The, the only reliable information we have about the teaching of Jesus is in the Gospels. Okay? No, but this is a claim you keep making. Okay, no, okay. I want to verify but How why? can someone who is an outsider you take that? your claim and verify that it is true? Because it, his teaching is consistent. Really? Yeah. So what was his teaching? What is the main teaching of Jesus Christ? Let's see. Uh -huh. The main teaching? Yeah, what is his main Love teaching? Love God with all your mind, soul and strength okay. and your neighbor as yourself. That's not new, Nick. Moses said that before. Huh? Moses said that before. Moses said that yeah. before. Exactly. Yeah, in the first commandment. That's the first commandment. You just quoted the first commandment. So how is it new? Tell me something so, that so Jesus taught you no, that is okay. that is something so unique. You agree with the point of consistency. The teaching of Jesus was consistent with the teaching of Moses. Okay, yes. so Moses' teaching was to believe only in one God, not the Trinity. Is it consistent? Okay, you, now we be moving on to the Trinity. No, it's not. I'm asking you. It's about the teaching. Huh? You mentioned the teaching. The I made Jesus, it. I made it specific teaching. Did Jesus teach about the Trinity? No, he did not. Did he? No, you brought it in. No, so but did why he? Why do you bring it in? So you agree that his teaching was consistent with the Unitarian belief of Moses? Moses said, Hero Israel, the Lord your God is one. One, and absolutely. Jesus said, Jesus said the same? Hero Israel, the Lord your God is one. And you shall serve the Lord your God with all your mind, soul and strength. Okay. Yeah? So his teaching is consistent and, with Moses, yes? And your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. So the question was then... By the way, that's in the first, that's in the Ten Commandments of Jesus? Yeah. Or Moses, sorry. So, so what is it? What is the teaching of Jesus that is unique? Tell me. No, he, All you said is Moses' teaching that Jesus repeated. Yeah. Yes? Exactly. Tell me what was Jesus' no, teaching. Yeah, but hold on. So there is a consistency between Moses, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now Jesus' teaching, what was unique about Jesus, as if you would compare him to Moses, if we make that comparison, the, the uniqueness of Jesus is that he died and after three days he rose again. Now, I asked about the teaching of Jesus, no, not, not about Jesus as a person. The, the, no, no. The, what Jesus did was teaching. Many times people asked him questions and he did something. Or he did something and he explained it to them. 
So there is no difference between his words and his actions. Really? So when Jesus was yeah. asked about the question, really, I'm talking about consistency. No, no. What he was teaching is what he did. You, you, you're when, missing. No, you're missing the point here. But for example, when the Jesus walks on water, yeah, there is explanation for what he did. When he turned water into wine, there's explanation for what he did. But these so these are not really the. You're talking about the actions that Jesus so performed. When Jesus. Died, no, wait, wait, wait a minute. No, let's take um, let let's take that let's take so that wa walking said, on water. So when Jesus died arose again after three days there see, is a see, teaching in this it's, it's gone off topic completely no, the topic no. is about the reliability of the gospels not what jesus did or what he or what miracles he performed okay so you're going off topic no, i'm no. asking you all these things look all these I things you learn you wait wait, wait. you know walking on water you learn from the bible is that right now did it, i'm asking you from any historical records is that anyone who has written and verified this mm -hmm. as an eyewitness that he walked on water. So, you doubt the fact that Jesus walked. It's on not water. what I doubt or what I what you I accept. You I'm asking you, how will you verify that this is a historically accurate record? How will you verify this? Because you see, I can write anything in a book, mm -hmm. and I can claim this person did this miracle. Yes. yes? You can. He started to fly one day. Yes. And he had wings, but then, but then I'm I'm unable to prove. Wait, wait! I am unable to prove to anyone unless you have a historical eyewitness to this account. So then I will have to say, okay, these are miracles which are mentioned in the book. I spoke to Jesus this morning. Yeah, and these these things can be this can can be mentioned by anyone. So the point is, you see, if you do not have the originals, if you do not have the first century manuscripts. You have only fragments from the second century and only a few uh, manuscripts from the third century and most of them come 300 years after Jesus then there is something very wrong here because your account is collected from a much later part in history so which, you know we, we, which book do you think is accurate the Quran yes the Quran why because we have the first century so manuscripts and years, we have the 600 years after Jesus how no, no but wait, wait, wait a minute we, asked, we didn't ask you so how many years an even bigger gap the between my source of information and your source of information. No, no, no. I'll tell you, it's not, so it's not the gap. I would say... Even you're, Moses had 600 years. You're, Moses you're had wait, wait, wait. It's actually 1,400 years. So your argument <laughs> 1400, is... Yes. My God. Hold on. Your argument is not consistent. No, no. You, mis you misunderstood the argument. I'm saying I have a reliable source of information. But how do you know it's reliable? I've... Uh, it's 4th century manuscripts. So how is it reliable? When Jesus walks on... If it is true that Jesus walks on water, what does it mean? No, no, you're changing the topic again. No, if asking, you are, if I'm you are, you, wait, 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 if your I'm manuscripts. You to think logically. No, it's nothing to think about. That's not the topic. Logically, the topic is not discussing. Wait, wait. The, you know, earlier you said not to bring in too many topics. That was your words. No. Now you want to explain the miracles of Jesus no, and to I'm think about the miracles of Jesus. Logically, no, no, no. Stick to one topic. The topic so is about. You. The topic is about the reliability of the Gospels, yeah. the reliability yeah. of the New yeah. Testament, yeah. the reliability of. The Bible as a whole. Yeah. You see, you have you have a huge gap of nearly 300 years between the most extant manuscripts uh -huh. of the Gospels of the New Testament. Uh, you mean which manuscripts are you referring to? The whole complete manuscripts? Well, the most the majority fragments. of them. Majority of them. Yeah. Okay. First century is zero, right? Okay. So for the first hundred years, you have zero manuscripts. Okay, but let's talk for the second century, you have fragments maybe, and the third century also very less. Oldest, Most of it. The oldest fragment of the Book of Psalms. Where does it come from? That's that's the Old Testament. Yeah, okay. I'm, are we talking about the New Testament? This Old Testament speaks about somebody who walks on water. Okay. How old is the Psalms? Yes. How old is the Psalms? How do we, no, I'm asking you. To no, you're the one who brought up the topic, so you should know about it. So how old? The is the fragment of Psalms well, or the manuscripts of Psalms yeah, that you have? They found it in uh, the Sea Scrolls. Yeah, you know how, how many years after Moses and David there? Yeah. How many years? But was how many side. years? The, More than a thousand years gap. Yeah, <laughs> so how can you verify what happened after a thousand years and the only evidence you have is extant manuscripts? Yeah. More than a thousand years after Moses, no, after that, David and so on. That's, that was written before Jesus, obviously. Of course, they came before Jesus. Okay. Yes. Now, in the Psalms, there is a reference to somebody who walks on water, right? And? And, so when somebody walks on water, yeah. you can find out who is this somebody. So you want to discuss the, the so miracles? I'm saying, 
the consistency between those different books has escaped you. How? It's not consistent. Against I'm asking you how are they reliable? So what you have done is you have, you have said, okay, there's a prophecy. Wait, 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 wait. You said there's a prophecy of. He's talking about. You, you said there's a prophecy of Jesus in the Old Testament, which is mentioned in the New Testament. You know, I have no issues about the prophecies of Jesus mentioned in the Old Testament. I'm not a Jew. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he done miracles. So as a Muslim, yes, your argument really falls flat on his face. The question to you is, how can you trust a manuscript a thousand years after its author? But you fail to get excited about those, uh, those miracles. Name Why should I get excited when I already know Name that Jesus the, did miracles? Name the miracle that you do actually. Why are you changing the topic again? Why do you do this all the time? I don't do this all the time. The point is, but how do you know a 4th century manuscript is reliable? Because Let me make it more easy for you. Okay. How do you know a 4th century manuscript is reliable? How? I'm not, I'm not talking about a 4th century manuscript. But I'm talking about that. Manuscript. I'm, I'm talking, talking about the extant manuscripts of the, of the Bible. I'm talking about the four Gospels. Yeah, how do you know they're reliable? I'm, I'm, I said about uh, consistency. No, it's not consistency. No, no, no. How are they reliable? How are they authentic? The consistency. There is no consistency. I can show you many inconsistencies. I can show you many inconsistencies. For example, in the Old Testament, wait, wait, in Isaiah, wait, wait, in the, in, hold on, hold on. In Isaiah, in Isaiah, you have, you, you have a prophecy and they claim it is about Jesus. Isaiah 9, I believe, Isaiah 9, 6, that he will be called um, uh, 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 mighty counselor, the uh, uh, almighty father and all this. Yes, Did anyone call Jesus the father? Inconsistency. I showed it to you already. I said there's many, the, the four Gospels I find reliable. Did anyone call Jesus Father? But I can, we can look at a particular... I looked at the, I just showed you the particular. Isaiah 9, 5, 6, sorry, Isaiah 9, 6. Show me who called Jesus the Father. <laughs> so, you, you know what he has done? He cherry picks the bit that agrees and that actually shows the, uh, what do you say, the prophecy about Jesus. But then where it actually fails, he wants to not even discuss that. No, I'm looking it up. You look just, it up. You just see too much of okay. a hurry. Isaiah 9, 6, look it up. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Yeah, Wonderful counselor, almighty God and something like that, you know? So, almighty, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Almighty God and the Father, something. So show me why Jesus is called the Father. You know so, he isn't. <laughs> you know he isn't. He's never called the Father. And, and if you are a Trinitarian and you call Jesus a the Father, then you're committing heresy. Nobody, nobody called Jesus the Father. Yes, you know that. because according to the Creed, the Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Holy Spirit. If we talk about the prophecy of Isaiah, it's a waste of time. Inshallah, right? Jesus the Father. It's like a busy day today. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but I, I want to check if that's actually the question because is that in the prophecy or not? Because you can ask questions. So what are you looking for now? Are you looking for Isaiah 9 yeah, what, what okay. is look it up read it if you want because you you can't take things out of context you have to read I'm not there. you I'm first not you saying, but that's why yeah, first you tell me whose prophecy that is and then you have to show me where Jesus is called the father okay you want to read it aloud yeah, just this, this, this verse, yeah? Yeah, Without just read the whole Just read this verse, no. You can put it in context if you don't believe me. For to us a child is born, and a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Okay. So a child is born who is called... Whose prophecy is that? Let's mighty God, yeah. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So who called him Everlasting so Father? Who? Who is this prophet? You tell me. years before Christ, yeah. sort of thing. Why didn't you tell me? Who is this prophet talking about? You tell me. Who is that? Whose prophecy is that? According to uh, you. Well, that is a, a matter of debate. Who is he talking about? No, you you know your Bible, right? Yeah. So you tell me whose prophecy that is, because many Christians, yeah. yes, including people like J, uh, J. Smith and his crew, yes, they all bring up this prophecy from the Old Testament yeah. and claim that is a prophecy about Jesus. Uh, th so there is. Do you agree with them or disagree? Let's, before we go further, do you agree that is a, Jesus, uh, a prophecy about Jesus? No, but do you understand the question? A child is born who is called Mighty God. Yeah. How is that possible? Why you only said Mighty God? 
Why you left out the other bits? No, that mighty God is also... You know, the first thing he says that the, the government will be on his shoulder. Yeah. Okay, so which government did so Jesus reign government. over? Exactly. Which government? Exactly. What do you mean exactly? I'm asking a question. A which good. government was on his shoulder? The kingdom of God. What's but he said the kingdom is not of this earth. Yeah. So which government? Which shoulder? So, which government was on his shoulder? So this prophecy... Is Are you going to answer the question? Yeah. Which I'm government sure. you, was on the shoulder of Jesus Christ? If you don't shout out to me all the time, I can ask a question. Okay, answer the question. Okay. One. So th this prophecy is a mystery. How can a child be born that is also God? See, and you won't answer the question. Father. You see what I mean? No. I asked you a very specific question. Which this government was no, no, no. on his shoulder? Relax, because if you only hear half sentences, you're never going to hear a whole lot. I, I read the whole so, thing. What do you mean I read half sentences? So this this uh, prophecy is about a Messiah. I think Which means Jesus, right? Well, then the question is, who is the Messiah? Okay. Is okay. the Messiah Jesus? Yes, he is the Messiah. Okay, so is that prophecy so, about Jesus? So, according to me... You see, he's going around about according He knows that. According to me, he knows Jesus it. is the Messiah. Good. According to you, Jesus is the Messiah. Yes. And according to Jay Smith, Jesus is the Messiah. Okay. Now, now, according to you, according so, to you, wait, wait. According, according to you, to Jew, is Jewish. Jesus, is Jesus the Father? But according to Jewish religion, yeah, I, am, I don't why know much about it. Why are you going about something we are not discussing? They, they wouldn't say the Messiah. Yeah, but I'm not Jesus. asking about Jews what they believe. No. I'm asking you a very simple question. Did Jesus, A, have any government upon his shoulder? Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, exactly. So the first step was about the, about the, uh, the government on his shoulder, right? Yeah. So, so tell me which government was on his shoulder. Right. So your argument now is, is Jesus the Messiah or not? No, my argument is, which government was on his shoulder? Or does the Messiah have a kingdom or not? Have you what got a, your My argument is very simple. Okay, if you listen, maybe you'll understand this time. Did it say the government will be on his shoulder? Yeah. Okay, the question is, which government? This kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You know the Messiah. Is the kingdom of Jesus this earth, upon this earth? The kingdom is among us. No, he said he's the and kingdom. Yeah, he the kingdom is not of this world. Earth. Jesus Otherwise, said, look, look. My people would have fought for me. If you had read your Bible, you'll know that. Jesus clearly says the kingdom is not of this world. Did he say that? He said it's not of this earth. Yes. Yeah? So which no. so now answer his the question. Is from another place. Okay, now so his kingdom So is so which government is mentioned his here then? Kingdom, kingdom is ah. a heavenly kingdom. And that heavenly kingdom. You know you you if us. only you were sincere for one minute, I am, I then you would be able to answer this question. If you if you say Are you going to tell me that he did he have did he have any government? Oh, was yeah. he in charge of any government oh, yeah. at all? Oh yeah. Which one? On this earth? Yeah, sick, he healed sick people. No, no, Obviously, government. You know what a government means? Yeah, yeah, I know. What does a government mean? He can achieve things. No, a things government doesn't mean this. Yeah. A government means he governs a certain land. Yeah. Okay? So, and this government, wait, wait, this means he has authority yeah. over that. Yeah. Jesus himself said, the kingdom, my kingdom is not of this world. Okay? So that is a failed prophecy. No. Another thing, where is he called the father? No, he, he set people free. He has authority to do that. Sorry, he set okay. people free? Yes. He couldn't save himself on the cross. He didn't save himself. Yeah, he didn't. Why do you think he couldn't? Why do you think he begged God to save him from you, the cross? No, you say he couldn't. Why do you think he couldn't? Because, uh, because he of didn't. his prayer. Do what did I he have, pray? No, but I don't do everything that I can. No, no, no. You don't. It doesn't make sense. You know your point? Why do you think he so, couldn't save himself? So because what, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, wait, wait, listen, listen. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, yeah. what was he praying to God? Yeah, not what? my will, but your will be done. That's Why did you miss out the first bit, the most important bit? What, what, what? Why do Christians do this? No, Why? I'm a, I don't know what she, I'm You guessing. know, you know, but you missed it. That, he guessing. said, take the cup away from me. Yeah. Let it be, thy will be done, not mine. Yeah. What does the cup signify? The suffering. The suffering. Did Jesus suffer? Yeah. That means his prayer got rejected. He yeah. prayed, yeah, yeah. he prayed yes. no. that he should not no, no. suffer, yeah, okay, or he shouldn't be crucified. Yeah, but that means only, his prayer got rejected. He only quoted half a sentence. No, I didn't. That's the problem. I quoted the whole because thing. I said, let it be, thy will be done, okay. not mine. So, the Father's will was done, wasn't it? What was the Father's will? That he would suffer. But you, you according to your prophecy, so, he was the Father. So. Are you telling me he's not the Father now? Huh? Is Jesus the Father or no. not? According to the, pro we try to interpret the, the prophecy. But you is Jesus counting. is Jesus the Father? No, we haven't we haven't discussed the prophecy properly because you keep jumping. It is still about the prophecy. No. There are two things that that you, you cannot said, wait. There are said, two things that you, you cannot said, actually. No, no. Uh, if you 
if you have an argument that Jesus is not the Messiah or that the Messiah doesn't have a kingdom, then I don't know what we need to talk about. Does he have a kingdom? Yes. Is it of this world? It is. He said, the kingdom of God is among you. Okay. Is his kingdom of are this we, world? Are we on this world? Is his kingdom of this world? No, it is not from this There you go. So by Jesus' own statement, you are wrong. No, that no, no, no. You said the government, according to the prophecy, the government will be upon his shoulder. And I kept asking you, which government was upon his shoulder? The answer, wait. If you were a sincere person, you would say none. None of the governments was upon his shoulder. The next, the next. This is like, I'm lying. You are lying. You are lying because you, you keep saying. I'm asking you for the source of your information. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Let's see if you're lying or not. Which government was upon his shoulder? So the source of the kingdom of God, is it from this earth or is it from the, from God? Is it from heaven? Yeah, I will answer after you answer my question. Which government was upon his shoulder? The kingdom of God. Is the kingdom of God of the Father or of the Son on this earth? That's the source of this kingdom. It's from no, no, heaven. No. Is the kingdom of God? So you're asking silly questions. No, it's not a silly question. And then I can't Is the kingdom of God? You're okay. So you're so saying, you know, when Jesus said, "Do you believe?" Let me let me tell you. When Jesus said, "The kingdom is not my kingdom is not of this world," what do you understand by that? that is my kingdom so is not of this world. It's of. He asked, it's about where does it come from? No, no, Jesus no, no, said, no, no, no. Kingdom is not of no I didn't ask you where it came from. It from. I asked you, what do you understand by the statement of Jesus, my kingdom is not of this world? No, it is, is it of this world or in the hereafter? It is of heaven. But okay, so not this world. He so in the hereafter, heaven. He brought it yeah. to earth. That's what Who he brought it to earth? Jesus. Where did it say in the Bible he brought it to earth? So are you telling me Jesus lied when he said my kingdom is not of this world? This, the source was not of this world. He never said the source. No. He said my kingdom is not of this world. I'm explaining to you, but if you don't like my explanation, it's up to you. Actually, your explanation goes against Jesus' teaching. Yes. Should I believe you or Jesus? Okay, there's two options. One option is the kingdom of Jesus. Listen, Wait, listen. What source of information do you have about Jesus? Well, I'm quoting the Bible. <laughs> yeah, but you don't trust the Bible. Why do you but you do. Yeah, but why do you But you do trust the Bible, right? Yeah. So should I should you not believe the Bible? Yeah, but you should as well. No, I shouldn't. I, I can sense. read it, but I shouldn't believe it. It doesn't make sense. Then. No, I don't think so. It makes sense. To me, if anyone kills God by his, uh, by uh, if God dies by his own creation, that is a nonsensical understanding of an almighty God. Did God die? According to you, he did. Really? So who died on the cross? Jesus. Was Jesus fully God? Yeah, but did God die? Was Jesus fully God? Uh, so we talk about the Trinity rather than about the Bible. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't, are you as a Christian, can you say that, can you be a Christian without understanding the Trinity? Or without believing in the Trinity? Yeah, I'm sure you can. So someone, because so someone who believes in Jesus let Christ me, let me explain. and not the Trinity, he, he's a Christian. The word Christian means, comes from Christos. Comes, comes from? Christos. No, it comes from Christ. Yeah, Christ. Not Christians. The, Christ. the word Christian comes from Christ, yeah. which is Greek did, for... Did, did Jesus believe... Which is Greek for Messiah. Yeah. By the way, Jesus believed in a, uh, believed so, in a God, right? So, that you believe in the Messiah is necessary. Messiah is not to be worshipped. Even the Jews will agree with that. Um, Even the Muslims will agree so with that. that a Messiah was never ever to be worshipped. Okay? So now let's get back to the point. We know, we know Jesus did not have any government upon his shoulder. We also know... It's getting a bit long. No, no, no. no I think, I think the re, you know where it went off track? When you started bringing in the, um, the teachings of Jesus, when I told you to verify to me, before you bring in the teachings of Jesus, verify that these Gospels are actually the, the accurate do you representation. The of Jesus? Do I follow the yeah. teachings of Jesus? I don't follow the teachings of Jesus unless it agrees with the Quran and the Sharia. So your point of reference is really the Quran? Yes, it is. And the Sharia. Yes, of course it is. Huh? It is, of course. Yeah, okay. But why do you believe that is more accurate than the Bible? Because we don't know who wrote it. You know why? The, because, um, let me explain my question. Yeah. Because we don't know who wrote the Quran. How do you know? I know. Uh, who did it? I know. The scribes of Prophet Muhammad wrote the Quran. The scribes? Yes. His name was Zaid bin Thabit and there were other scribes with him. We at least know the name of the people who wrote it. Do you know any person who wrote the manuscripts? The Gospels. Do you know any? Yes? Yeah, Anyone? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Yes, and your, uh, your scholars say none of them in whose name these Gospels are written were the actual authors of this book. Because these were, these were written... I, 
No, these, these extant manuscripts were written like in the 4th century. The early disciples, unless they live for 400 years, then you have a very illogical, think, inconsistent I think, point. I think you need to find a few more reliable scholars than that. Okay, who is a reliable scholar according to you? Uh, Give me a name. J. Smith? <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, he, J. Smith? He, uh, he's probably a scholar on Islam. I haven't followed him that Okay, much. so give me a scholar of uh, Christianity. Uh, Tom Wright. Tom go, go by Tom Wright. He's a good scholar and he knows how to... What are, what are his credentials? Huh? What are his credentials? He's a, he, he used to be a bishop or archbishop in the Church of England. No, no, his credentials in the New Testament uh, yeah, he's a New research. Testament, he's a New Testament scholar. Okay, so, so what does he, he say? Does he say Mark, Matthew, Luke and John? actually so wrote these so Gospels? If you look for reliable scholars on the New Testament... What did you say the name was again? Uh, Tom Wright. Tom Wright. Tom did he actually say He's that Mark, one, Matthew, Tom. Luke and John wrote the Gospels themselves? Or were they written in, in their names? I would think he says that they wrote... No, no, don't tell me what you think. If you know for, if you know for certain, then say, otherwise say, I don't know. No, but you quoted the scholar. No, you're the one who brought up the scholar, I didn't. Okay, okay. No, you, you brought up No, I said the Christian scholars, honest, majority of them, know. yeah, I brought up a generic scholarly uh, agreement and consensus that none of these people, Mark, Matthew, Luke and John, okay, were, were the ones who were the authors in which the Gospels That's were written. Uh, the Gospels but were just written in the names. Do a little bit more research and find some... I think you're the one who should do the research. It's your religion. I'm all the time doing research. I hope so. So you brought in one scholar, but you don't even know what he said about the Gospels. Yeah. He, Is that right? So go home and do your research. I know what he says. What, does he say Mark, Matthew and Luke and John wrote the Gospels? It, he does say that the New Testament is a reliable... That wasn't my question. Does he say... Does he question. say these were the individuals who wrote the Gospels? If you don't know, you're more than welcome to say I don't know. No, no. I, I would think so, yes. No, don't say I would think so, which means you're not sure. No, I, I'm, I'm sure, but I'm not a scholar. But I will... Wait, wait, you're sure what? That they wrote... Yes, that, that this guy, you, that this scholar which you quoted... No, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John are the authors of those four Gospels. Yes, but this... Does the scholar say this? Why, why does the scholar say this? Which you see how you're trying to dupe the people? But we can see right through it. Duping the people? I yes, you are. Because you're saying, look, you're saying that they, these are reliable. So the question is very simple. You throwing these things like, I'm lying, I'm duping. You are, you are. And this and that. When you say, actually, when you say you are certain, actually, when you, look, look, when you say you bring a, first you bring in a scholar. Then you're not sure whether he actually I've, said what I, I've, what you're claiming I've he said. You the name of the scholar. But did he say what I asked you? And if you want a reliable scholar yeah. of the New Testament, I think Tom Wright is a reliable one. Did he say Mark, Matthew and Luke and John wrote the Gospels? This is like the fourth time I'm asking yeah, yeah. you. Okay. Is that a yes or a no? As far as I know, <laughs> he does agree with that. As far as you know? Yes. So you, haven't, you don't know if he said it? I agree with that as well. So you are not sure that he said it? No, no. I'm certain that Mark... Okay, I'll tell you what, next time Matthew you bring the evidence from this guy where he actually Matthew says very clearly without ambiguity that Mark, Matthew, to, Luke and John actually... I, I don't... I'm not going to bring evidence because... No, because you don't have evidence, no, that's why. To, no. Not the onus is on you because you're the one you, making the claim. No, to you personally, yeah. you don't want evidence. Why? Because you don't want to believe the Gospels. It's not that doesn't even evidence. make sense. No, it's not about evidence. It doesn't make sense to me. So you're saying I should first believe in the in the Gospels and then go look for evidence? No, no. Now what are you saying? No, no. I'm saying you don't want to believe in the Gospels. Why would I don't want to believe in the Gospels? Because Have you asked me? Yeah, yeah. Why? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know. Well, I'll tell I you why. Like next to, time, I would like to next time before you make a claim, would, ask me. I would like to the reason I don't believe in the Gospel is because I use a principle from the Quran. Yeah. In the Quran, Allah says, if so, this book, listen, listen, wait. Yeah. Allah says, if this book is from anyone other than Allah, surely you will find contradictions and discrepancies in it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Are there contradictions in the Bible? Okay, so why? But, but I'm telling you the answer why? now. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And I accept your answer. Okay, so because, do you believe there are contradictions in the Bible? No, because what you... Because if, there, if God doesn't make mistakes, God doesn't have contradictions no, no. in his work. Why do you choose? If there was contradictions, then surely this cannot be from why did you make the choice God Almighty. Why did you make the choice you made? Why do you believe the Quran? You're changing the topic again. No, no because you said I don't believe the topic the Bible, is about the credibility of the Gospels. Because you're if you want to discuss the Quran, we can discuss that as the next topic. Right now, can but, we stick to one topic, please? But, yeah, but you don't want to believe the Bible or the Gospel because it contradicts the Quran. Is that right? You didn't hear my answer, did you? But did you hear my answer? 
That's what you just Did you hear me. my answer? That's what you just told No. Me. See, that's the problem. You were thinking of the next question me, instead of listening to me. Tell me again. One of the principles of the Quran is that if, if the book, i.e. the Quran is from anyone other than Allah, surely you will find contradictions in it. So if the book contains contradictions, it cannot be from God. I apply the same principle to the other scriptures. Yeah. Does the Bible contain contradictions? Yes, it does. Because the Bible I think has many contradictions. I think there's lots of things you don't understand about the Bible. But it's there might be, but the point is, but do you agree there are contradictions in the Bible? No, there, no? Are things, there are things that you don't understand in the Bible. So you're saying there, there are no are contradictions at all? I need to research that. I don't understand. I need to research that. So if you say this or that doesn't add up, I'll have to take time to work out how does it add up or what does it mean. But to just say, oh, I don't get it, it's nonsense. That's a weird kind of research. No, I didn't say it was nonsense. No. I gave you a criteria on which I base but, that your Bible is not reliable, not accurate, but, and not from God but, because it contains have, contradictions. But the main issue you have with the Bible is that it doesn't agree with the Quran. And you have decided to believe the Quran. You know, what's this guy's problem, honestly? I gave him the reason why I don't agree that the Bible is from the Word of God. Yet he tells me something completely different. Yeah, but that's what you why decided. Don't you, why don't you listen to my but answer? You have decided that based on your understanding of the Quran. No, based on my research. Based on my research, that if I believe any book is from God, the first thing is it should not have contradictions. Okay, but Do you agree we with that principle, with we that criteria? About the word of God. No, we were talking about the, the reliability of, the word of what you claim to be the word of God. Yeah. Okay. So, does the Bible have contradictions? I think there are things that seem contradictory, but if you wish to understand them, you can. Okay, let me ask you this. It's not too difficult. Does God repent? Does God repent? That means, does he acknowledge that he has made a mistake and he's sorrowful about it? Yeah, explain the word repent. Like, I just, made a mistake. I just told you. No, yeah. it's not a, just a mistake. When you make a mistake, yes, you regret it. Yeah. And that is what you actually repent. Well, you can for. regret the good things you've done as well. Really? Give me an example. example. Give me an example for a good thing that you have repented. For, for example, if I give you 100 pounds, yeah. and then the next day I think I could do with 100 pounds, I could regret I've given it to you. But it was a good thing to do. So first, why did you give me the 100 so pounds? It doesn't have to be about a mistake. No, regretting, no, but, but regretting can also be about something good you did. No, but God tells you why you regret it. Huh? God tells you why you regret it for creating human beings. Okay. In in Genesis chapter six, verse six. You want to open and read it, so you don't say I took it out of context. No, no, no. I, I know so God mean. said first in Genesis three yeah. that He was glad that He created humans. So he, no, no, He was glad with His creation, and then and then by Genesis six six, He's okay. saying He regretted. I think this is already not a subject because we talked about the Gospels first to narrow things down. Now we broaden it out to include Genesis. But the point is still that you. No, no, I. You asked me. You, you told me that there are certain things I, I conceive as a contradiction when really it is not a contradiction. No, so my question to you is did God regret in Genesis I'm saying for, you, for creation have, of human beings? I, I say you have chosen for whatever reason to not trust the Bible, which is fine. That's your choice. Does the Bible have contradictions? Your Stop changing the topic. Does the Bible have contradictions? Personal, yes or no? Personally, yes or no? Personally, you have decided not to trust the Bible. It doesn't matter what you I gave you the reason, did I not? Yeah. Because, what was my reason? Because you decide to trust the Quran. No, no. <laughs> no, you see? That's your reason. You know, this is like the third time I'm telling this guy. Have you got a problem hearing or what? Or understanding? I, no, I have a very good... I understand. Okay, so what was the criteria I gave you for not trusting the Bible? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I say, is it? Because it only matters what you think, I think. No, you have decided. Seriously, man. You have decided to trust. Okay, what was the criteria I gave you? You have decided to trust. What was the criteria I gave you? So your criteria come from the Quran. What was the criteria? And yeah, I told you it comes but, from the Quran. But. But what? You're a person. You've decided this. Okay. You have have you decided? You have a okay. free will. Have you decided that the Bible has contradictions or not? I have decided that God does not have contradictions. Okay, so does God and repent? I have decided that does God repent for creating humans? I have found out that the Bible see, the one tells me a lot of very interesting information about God. Yeah. It's worth reading. And, 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 very, and, and, and the other things which I it says... I also understand that God is bigger than me. His mind is bigger than me. So when I don't understand something people or God or the Bible tells me about Him, 
I have to think about it. How does this add up? That's fine, but he doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. Does he, not? he doesn't. Are you, are you saying God makes mistakes? No, but that's a theological argument. No, it's not. It's in the Bible. It's, not, it's, it's, it's actually in the Bible. No, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Shall, shall we show him the worst? But still, I don't know where you come from. Huh? You that doesn't matter. matter. I know, I know. And, and, he, and he says why you regret it. the word. Oh, sorry, did I say repent? It was regret, actually. But he regretted. That yeah, why did he regret? What no. did he regret? Did he regret that he made a mistake? Does it say? Yes, yes, it does. No. Bring up the Bible. It says he regretted something. No, you haven't read the Bible, that's why. Does it say he made a mistake? What does the word regret mean? Sure, sure, sure. Sure. Your meaning. What you, you see now he's playing semantics. He knows he's cornered. No, 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 now he's playing no, no, semantics. No, no, no. I'm not cornered. You are. You made a mistake. You don't even admit it. You, you, you misunderstand the word regret. Okay, what does regret mean? Let's see. That you think I shouldn't have done that. Okay. Shall we show you from the uh, so dictionary? I'm saying I could do something good and think I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, which means you you somehow understand that you made a mistake by giving no. me 100 pounds. No, no, Hence no. you regret it. No, no, no. Whether it's a good thing or bad thing, it is your decision which you regret actually. Yeah. I.e. you made I a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't. You made a mistake. Okay, so you didn't have the knowledge of the results. So, no, well, that is that another is. interpretation, but in this case... Okay, I tell you what, you interpret this and you tell us whether there's a mistake God made or not. Okay, how about that? We are not going to put our, our, our own understanding into this particular verse. No, I'll let we, you... Because we trust the yeah. Bible, don't you? I will let you, someone who trusts the Bible, to exegete it. Really? <coughs> The Old Testament. Is okay, here he says here. Do you want to read it? Verse 6. That, that's the Quran question, the Old Testament as well. Just read one, uh, verse 6. Do you want to read it? From verse 6 onwards? Um, it's a bit small. I'll, I'll make the uh, fonts bigger if you want. There you go. Are these big enough for you or if you want, let, I can make it bigger. Read it aloud so we can all hear. Okay. Read aloud. Okay, yes. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, etc. So the Lord regretted he had made them. What do you make of it? Why did he regret that? You tell me. He said it there. Because the because wickedness of the human race. Did he know that already? That the humans were going to become wicked? He, God is all-knowing, right? He's omniscient. He made them with the option to be wicked. No, no. Did he have the knowledge that humans will be wicked? That's a, a good question. Did he know that in yeah. advance? So use your own understanding and you tell me, if you knew something, no. would you make that mistake? No. For example, if you, in hindsight, you knew that you would be in need of the 100 pounds you gave me. Would you have given it to me? Yeah, but you wouldn't, would you? You see, God, wait, wait, wait. God here in Genesis 3. Let's read what if Genesis 3. I, if I give you freedom to do something, yeah. you can do with it what you want. Yes, I can. And when I give it to you, I can realize afterwards you can't handle that freedom. No, no, no. no. You, see where, you, see where, you see where you made the mistake? When you have given me freedom, yeah. yes? and you know what I was going to use or misuse that freedom, yeah. yes? Then why would you regret? Because you would already know yeah. okay. in so the future, I'm because right. God knows the future, right? Human feeling, human yes. emotion, yeah. So does God have emotions? According to here, he's jealous. To yes, yes, he does. He, he regrets, yeah. he's jealous, yeah. yes, he gets angry. These are emotions. You only mentioned the negative emotions. Any good emotions in Yeah, he, he's, he's loving. Yeah. Yes, no. you, lo you love keep that, going. don't you? You love that. But anyway, why sidetrack? Why sidetrack? No, no. Did God make a mistake? That is the question. Did he make a mistake? He said he regretted. Okay, what does the word regret mean? So, Shall we use the dictionary? Because I'm assuming your first language is not English and neither is mine. So let's use the dictionary, okay? Is that okay with you? No, but obviously um, it's clear what it says. He regretted that he made humans because of the wickedness of them. Okay, so he made a mistake that he made humans? No. Regret is mistake, because you know that? A mistake is... That's the kind of... You, you put a value on it. And I'm saying you can regret too. Okay, here's, too. here's a definition of regret. Feel sad, repentant, or disappointed over something that one has done or failed to do, yes? The noun is a feeling of sadness, repentance, or disappointment over an occurrence of something that one has done or failed to do. 
Okay, so God was disappointed or sad or repentant over creating human beings. But God already knew what the human beings were going to do. Does he know what you're going to do tomorrow? God? Does he know what you are going to do? Of course, God knows everything. So, if do you, wait, wait, do you not believe that? No, if, if you do something bad tomorrow. Yeah, God knows that. He already knows. Yes. So, why would he judge you about what you do? No, no, God will judge me on the day of judgment, not tomorrow. No, but. Unless tomorrow was the day of judgment. If it's, not, if it's your last day tomorrow, the next day will be judgment. But no, no, that's not how it works in so Islam. I'm sorry. So, I'm saying. Anyway, why are you changing the topic? No, I'm not The question the is. Topic. Why did God regret? Why was he disappointed about something he already knew? Why was he sad about something he already knew? Why did he thought, Why did he think that was a failure? Because he says here, feel sad, repentant or disappointed over something that one has done or failed to do. I'm asking you to apply logic to your theological statement. And I'm asking you to apply logic. Can God regret? Yes. If he knows everything? It says that he can regret. So okay. That's a very so, old Sorry, that's a very... Listen, this is wrong, do you understand? Do you see the contradiction here? I think he regrets talking to you. <laughs> I think so. If you, if you know the future... I think the other one is in I Genesis know, I know 3. Car crash over there. I don't know exactly I where. Where well, he says he was glad to... If I go there, you know... <laughs> it doesn't make sense. 100 pound example is good. 